back to the welcome I almost stopped looking into that what the fuck what am I thinking welcome back to GSA forever um so last chapter of what you don't know we did chapter 15 sunsets and we found out that Drake took Jay to a to um a to a park and then they watched the sunset pretty much together so, um, last part of that one, that we're doing chapter 16, Rosie, today. The drive back was relaxing, relaxing, especially because Drake was playing soft, softer music, which I thought was non-existent for him. The park was only about an hour away from the boarding school, so I, so we would get back at a decent time. I was resting my hand on my right hand, and my elbow was propped up on the window. It had only been ten minutes of silence, and Drake broke it as he started rambling about how... He wished he could live in the park, and how many people are missing out on such beautiful on a on a beautiful out on a beautiful thing. Then he paused and started to talk about the band that was singing the current song in the car. I laughed as this quick subject subject change, but I couldn't. But I couldn't shut Drake up. Nobody could. I guess it was best to listen to him. I didn't mind listening to him, anyways. He started lip singing, and I told him not to get in, to not get us in a wreck. He smiled at me, and I stopped apolog and stopped apologizing. But I couldn't help but laugh when I realized he was wearing his blue sunglasses again. Chapter sixteen, Rosie. We had just gone out of break, and Drake ran up to me accidentally on purpose, nearly knocking me over. He kept chanting, chanting, pool time, pool time, pool time, and I was grinning ear, ear to ear. I laughed and agreed to go with him, and I ran down the hallway to, and go upstairs to our room. I guess I had a head start on getting ready. I walked down the hallway and opened the door, finding Drake jumping up and down on his bed, only wearing swim trunks and a neon green t-shirt. Typical. I smiled, I shook my head, and went into the bathroom to change. Drake had all mor had had all of his morning appliance ordered orderly laid out on the sink. They looked exactly the same every day. I had looked at myself in the mirror, changing and wishing I had more had more stomach muscles than I did right now. I started to reach for the door, but I noticed a piece of paper slightly sticking out from underneath the blow dryer. I pulled it out, unraveling and the sloppy fold, and I squinted, trying to read the small, scratchy writing. Monday, 4.15, is all it said. I stared in confusion and jumped when Jig shot from the other side of the door. Ready? Uh, yeah, hold on. I tried not to sound too suspicious, folding the paper up sloppy as I found it and stuck it under, under, the blow, under his blow dryer. He opened the door before I could, though, 
and saw a note and saw the note immediately grabbing it and ripping it and ripping it up. And I wonder if he had even read it yet. His face twisted in a small sense of serious seriousness and he shrugged and then smiled softly muttering sorry about that. When he closed the door again, I pulled a t-shirt over my head and headed down to the pool with Drake by my side. I considered asking him about the note. Maybe he wrote it. He had neat handwriting though. I had seen him write before. Maybe he purposely wrote sloppy so no one could read it. But what if the note was for him? Who, would, If it wasn't for him, who was it from? And it was today a mysterious person was talking about talking about he or she wrote Monday. My thought broke when Drake pulled on my arm telling his friends were, telling me his friends were waiting for us. He always hung around the same people. I mean, he talked about everyone in this he talked he talked to about everyone in the school, but he had a permanent group that he stuck around during breaks. One of them was a tall girl with long amber hair. She is she's the one who pulled me into the pool the first time. And she's done the same thing ever since the whole scene who made everyone laugh after being pulled in. I swam back to the surface and pulled myself over the, over to the over the edge and sat down watching them. I know this may sound creepy, but I always have found amusement in watching watching interesting people. They were really interesting. Auburn Auburn hair was piggyback riding a tall blonde, a tanned blonde. I wonder if they were dating, but the amber hair seemed to have such much fun with the red-haired dude. Drake messed around with the redhead, dunking him into the water and taking revenge. There was some weird sense of truth to them throwing each other around. Even though Drake was grinning, it gave me a feeling that I couldn't really place. Red hair moved across the circle. Of friends to the auburn hair and the shorter, stubbier, paler girl named Rosie. She was pretty. Drake swam over to where I had been sitting after five minutes of coming in the pool, and he lifted himself just enough to cross his arms uh, over the side of the pool and rested his chin on his arm, looking up at me. How are you doing? His expression seemed somewhat serious, but then he smiled and followed my eyes, checking out Rosie. She's single. She told me you're cute. He shrugged. You should ask her out. She'd love it. He didn't really give me a chance to say anything back because he went right under the water to Rosie to the surface at least ten feet away from me. He was laughing he was laughing at himself. And I was glancing at Rosie. She caught my eye. I blushed a little bit. She swam over and started to talk about how much she hates it here, but she loves break time and pointing at one of her friends. She was like Drake in that she was like Drake in the way that she loved to talk, but she liked talking about herself. Drake talked about other things. She was she was nice though, and I had and I hadn't had a girlfriend at least in at least a year. Plus, Drake had already warmed up for her, warmed her up for me, so I asked her on a date. She quickly said yes. Okay, this is a boy and a boy story, but I don't think there's anything to do really. So. Hopefully, 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 Jay and Drake start having some, like, kissing and sex, because having these videos with nothing, like, sexual is not really good. So, um, I'm gonna finish the story, and then if there's nothing really that good, if I don't think we should read the sequel, let me guys, let me know what you guys, when we get to that point, when we get to the last chapter, which is chapter 31, and then there's the finale. So, um, if there is nothing that makes me think that I should read, because I really make the final decision, but if enough of you guys comment and say, hey, read, read the sequel, I will. But, yeah. So, I hope you guys have a great day, and until next time, Gaze O'Cage just ask the GSA, mwah!